Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. In this vi video lecture, we will be talking about intrinsic conduction system. Okay. We have been talking about the cardiovascular system. An intrinsic conduction system is a part of the cardiovascular system where we see how the heart starts the process of conduction and starts to beat and formation of the beat. That's what we are going to form. Intrinsic conduction system acts the basic rhythm that the heart is beating. Okay? And it consists of autorhythmic cardiac cells that initiate and distributes the same type of impulse throughout the heart. That is known as the action potential. It's known as the action potential of the cardiac cells that ultimately helps to move first generate and to move that cardiac rhythm from one area of the heart to the next. So goals for our learning is to identify the components of the intrinsic conduction system to recognize that the intrinsic conduction system coordinates heart's activity by determining the direction and the speed of the heart's depolarization. That's a part of uh, the card like uh, the active potential or action potential that generates due to the polarization and depolarization of ion channels that are present in the cardiac cell membrane and to relate the heart electrical activity to an ECG wave tracing and how ECG actually help us to find out whether your heart is beating in a proper rhythm or not. Now in the intrinsic conduction system overview if you look it is composed of different types of regions. Okay? First is known as the SA node, sinoatrial node, internodal pathways, AV node, atrioventricular node, AV bundle, atrioventricular bundle, bundle branches and Purkinje fiber. So it starts, the whole process starts from the SA node and it completely distributes until the Purkinje fiber. So the whole impulse generated, the action potential actually fired up here in the SA node, okay, SA node. Then it is distributed and transferred till the Purkinje fiber and ultimately to the ventricular syncytium, okay. And the movement is shown here inside. Starts with SA node, then to the A atrial syncytium, junctional fibers to the atrioventricular node or AV node, then AV bundle, then bundle branches, then Purkinje fibers, then ventricular syncytium. Starts point here and then slowly migrating. So the nodes that we are talking about, SA node is here, AV node is this one, Purkinje fibers are distributed through the endometrium here in the ventricular area. Now if we look at the whole process, what we know about it, let us find it out. The SA node is located in the right atrium. It initiates the depolarization impulse, which in turn generates an action potential that spreads throughout the atria to the AV node. That is the whole process, the first process to begin with. Let me change the color to red that will help to understand. Okay. So then it comes to the internodal pathway, the second one. The internodal pathway is located in the walls of the atria. These are the internodal pathways. Okay. And they link the SA node to the AV node. And they distribute the action potential to the contractile cells of the atria. Then it reaches the impulse to the AV node, which is located in the inferior interatrial septum. We call it interatrial septum because this is between the atrium, two different atrium. This is uh, the left, uh, this is the right atrial, this is the left atrium. So interatrial septum is this middle layer that is separating two different atrium, it presents there. Then the impulse is transferred from AV node to the AV bundle. Now this here, the only electrical connection is present between the atria and the ventricle is the AV bundle. So they are very important to transfer the electrical signal from AV node to the rest of the ventricular area because the major start point 
of this impulse is the atrium it's not the ventricle the only way the ventricle will get some of that is due to the av bundle and then it allows the action potential to move from the interatrial space or interatrial septum to the intraventricular septum and then finally connecting to the ultimate area uh, through the av node the bundle branches bundle branches are the portions of those av bundle that are distributed called as av bundle branches and this av bundle branches conveys the action potential to the interventricular septum which is present between two different ventricles okay and then they will finally release it to the purkinje fiber which are further branched portion of the bundle branches okay and they begin at the lower interventricular septum to the apex of the heart and then continue superiorly throughout the myocardium of the ventricles this purkinje fibers convey the action potential to the contractile cells of the ventricle that will help them to contract and the process of the rhythm to complete so the action potential which spread from the for, from the autorhythmic cells to the intrinsic conduction system to the finally to the contractile cells are electrical events these are all electrical events and these electrical events are developed due to the charge distribution across the cell membrane let's say outside this is inside and there are different membrane proteins embedded who can transfer sodium and potassium in and out that will ultimately leads to the generation of a membrane voltage a membrane potential normally the membrane potential is 72 or approximately 70 millivolt which gets altered due to the uptake and release of sodium and potassium in and out of the cell and the subsequent contraction of the contractile cell is a mechanical event that causes the heart beat to process so it starts as an electrical signal in sa node it it's transferred finally transferred to the contractile cells mostly present in the myocardium mostly present in the ventricle area here and once it's transferred to this contractile cells in the myocardium those cells process this energy and convert it into mechanical energy to finally cause the heart to beat okay because electrical energy cannot help it beat electrical energy starts the process and then finally provides it to the physical energy mechanical energy that will help it to beat okay so that's all begin with sa node generates the impulse excitation begins transfer to the av node move through the bundle branches reaches the purkinje fiber and purkinje fiber finally give that to the contractile cells that will provide the mechanical process of beating so if you look at ecg graph of a heart and how the rhythm of the graph you will find this is a kind of a very uh, standard graph that you will find you will find first a little blank then we have a little up then we have a have a peak then we have a little up and again goes down something like that so the first part when starts here it will take some time so the lag is due to the sa node start point then for the av node you'll go get this simple small arch then for the bundle branches you'll get a little go down because the energy is going slow now going down now but once they reach that in the purkinje fiber as it spread across the complete myocardium which is much stronger which is much thicker in the ventricle and they have contractile cells they now receive the signal and contraction begins so we get a huge peak there due to that contraction that's called as a ventricular excitation when it begins there will be very slow but when its excitation completes we get a higher peak then the whole process will uh, will go again so if we look at the ecg wave the first small arch is known as the p wave then the downfall q very rise sharp peak r and small down that is s so this is known as qrs complex together and then it goes another wave known as a t wave mostly this is due to the repolarization of those cells in the ventricular area that's why you get the t wave it makes the ventricle ready for the next type of contraction so begin with the p wave which is the depolarization begins of the atria in response to the sa node triggering 
that start point. Then we have a small downfall here, it's known as PR interval. That is the delay of AV node to fall, allow the filling of the ventricles. Why the delay? Because once it's developed in SA node, it takes some time to move to the AV node. Okay, that's the delay. Then once they receive that, depolarization further occurs in the ventricles, triggers the main pumping contractions ultimately to the ventricles because the contraction will be for the contractile cells. So huge sharp peak observed for the contraction in the ventricle. Then it again goes down. Okay. Here. Beginning of the ventricle repolarization. We have a flat observed in the voltage because there is a not a huge change now because right after the sharp peak it falls down and, and they will repolarize to maintain the action potential of the membrane. That's why it, we have a flat line. Then for a ventricular repolarization we have a another peak which is T wave. So here you can see the contraction of the ventricle. Let me take a color here. Yes. Contraction of the ventricle starts uh, at the apex of the heart and moves superiorly forcing the blood upward towards the arteries to move. Okay. This is important because the large arteries are located superiorly. So the blood has to start the process from the bottom of the heart and go up because we can't, we don't need uh, something to go from top to the bottom. We need a pressure to move from bottom to the top. That's what is going on here. Now the correlation between the heart and the electrical activity and the ECG wave tracing, we can easily find by looking at this P, Q, R, S and T, this, this different, uh, different regions of the graph, different peaks that is going to tell us an important insight. Okay. Here you see the start point of the P wave begins here from the SA node and interaction with the AV node here. The rest of the QRS that R peak is due to the contraction of the ventricle and the ventricular contractile cells. And then T is the recovery wave that ultimately shifts the heart back to the earlier con uh, condition. Okay. Now if you look at here, this is a very interesting uh, set of graphs that are going to tell you about uh, the difference between the different type of heartbeat. For a normal heartbeat, it's simply the all the phases like P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T like that. But for a very hard, uh, like very, very fast heartbeat, it's like all these waves, all these R peaks will be presented very close to each other, very, very close to me. Okay. And then the slow heartbeat means you see this R peak or this peak for this R uh, site or the R wave, they are placed further. From each other. And there's a problem with irregular heartbeat. You will not find any of this kind of situations. Like if it's a slow heartbeat, you will find that uh, all of them, all of those different uh, R wave are moving in a constant distance. So as the very fast beat, they will be in the constant distance. Though the distance will be much closer, but constant distance maintained. But for an irregular heartbeat, between two R waves, the distance is high then again after that the distance is very slow very less so it will be like imbalanced heartbeat or irregular heartbeat that is denoting some sort of problem related to the uh, induction you know i mean inter internal conduction system of the heart and also it's denoting that there is something wrong going on in the heart rhythm okay so for summarizing everything we can tell the intrinsic conduction system of the heart initiates the depolarization of the impulse the action potential spread through the heart, causing the coordinated heart contraction event. And an ECG wave can trace the records of this electrical activity that is going on in the heart in form of the heart rhythm. Okay, So that's all about intrinsic conduction system. I hope this video helped you out. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos of human physiology like that. And definitely share this video with your friends. Thank you.